Hi, so you're wondering how to take pelargonium cuttings. Well, in this video, we're going to show you how. Hi, we're John Horsey Horticulture, helping you develop your gardening skills by bringing you weekly tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, do consider subscribing. And if you'd like to download a free guide to monthly tasks in the garden, the link is in the description below. Okay, today we're gonna to look at these, uh, uh, these pelargoniums. You've probably heard them called geraniums, and that's what they were called for many, many years. But now we strictly, we call them zonal pelargoniums. They've been out all summer. They've done really quite well, but now they're looking a bit leggy. Uh, and we know that if we have a hard frost, we're going to lose them. So a good way to, to save them, to overwinter them, and also to increase your stock, is to take some cuttings at this stage. So we're going, going to take these back to just below a, 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 a node. Not so important now, it will be in a minute, but uh, just take it, there's a shoot coming there, so we go across to there. There we are, that's a nice clean cut. And then we'll use that for a cutting in a minute. This one here is much easier to do because you can actually cut back to a, 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 a cut there. So we'll take that one off. And already the plant's looking better, isn't it? And we go down to a cut in there. All right, so that's, uh, that's the plant as it is. Now we, we can leave, we can risk that and leave it out over winter if you want to. Um, put it into a sheltered spot is probably the best thing. Before we start, we've got to get a good compost for these plants. Now what you want is something which will um, drain well, but hold moisture. It's what you call a well-drained but moisture-retentive compost. Um, <laughs> it's difficult to say, difficult to get to write sometimes. The traditional way of rooting compost uh, cuttings is to use 50-50 peat and coarse sand. So there's our, 50, our, our pot of peat, and then we need a pot of sand. Now the sand has to be coarse sand. That means it's got different sized particles. And if you look at that, you can see it's all different sizes. That fine beach type sand is no good at all because that'll just set solid. So you need to get some of that coarse sand. Sometimes it's called horticultural grit. Uh, you can get it in the garden center or you can get it much cheaper actually in builders merchants. But uh, this is what we're looking for, a mixture of those two. So in they go and we mix them up. Um, something satisfying about doing it by hand. Um, <clears throat> keep turning it until you find it's a nice uniform color till all the uh, different bits are well mixed in and then you've got a really nice really nice uh, mixture there to use okay so here we are here's our mix now I, I always like to use clean pots for cuttings because uh, it gives a bit of, bit of sterility and it gets good hygiene so here I've got a nice clean pot which I'm going to use and I fill it up uh, to about to the rim. It's going to settle down a bit more, so you might want a bit more in a minute, but that's, uh, that's where we're looking for. Now, looking at these cuttings, we really are looking for a cutting about, what, say, six inches long. These uh, bigger leaves will actually cut into cut pieces off to make them nice and well, so we don't lose too much uh, moisture when it's potted on. So those are cut off. Um, actually, I'm going to take that one off now. There's a nice little cutting. Now, it's important to cut below a node. Now, a node, these are the points here along the stem where the leaves came off. Now, where the leaves came off, there's a concentration of the, uh, the cambium, the important part of the plant which actually produces roots. So what we're going to do is to cut this just below a node so that we'll have a higher concentration of cambium because that's where the junction was. When we took cutting, we used the secateurs. These are quite sharp, I keep them very sharp. Um, that was quite enough to clean cut on there. But when we come to putting the cutting into the, into the compost, we want it to heal very quickly. And the, 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 the cleaner the cut is, the better it will heal. So I'm going to use a knife, and I'm just going to give a sharp edge. But just to make sure I've got a decent edge on my, uh, my, my, my knife, I'm going to use this stone. There's two, two sides, a coarse side and a fine stone. Fine, fine side. So just a little, Usually about two one way, seven or eight that way they say, and two that way. But that if you if you do it regularly, just check it. You know you've got a sharp sharp edge. So looking at this plant now, there's a node, there's a node, there's a node. I'm going to cut actually below that node there to put it 
quite deep in the pot, so I'm cutting as tight as I can. Can you see that? Cutting as cut tight as I can to that node. And when you look at it, can you see the node there? And there's the cut below it. Okay. Uh, and then we take this over to the uh, to, to the, comp to the compost, and uh, you can use a dibber. You can use all sorts of fancy things. You can use a pencil. I actually find the fingers quite useful. Uh, uh, these these my pots you'll notice are fairly deep, and I think that's a good that gives you more uh, more compost. It gives you more um, medium there to sort of keep the temperature and keep the moisture levels stable. And I'm going to put it down the side there, ensuring that one two at least two of the nodes are covered with compost. Firm it in quite gently like that, and there we are. Okay, so now we have these uh, these little prepared cuttings. I've got four of them here, and I'm just going to insert them around the, around the side of the pot. Enough, it's a nice deep hole like that. Um, just push it a little bit deeper in so you get good contact. Firm the compost back around it, and that's all we need. Now, some people will use um, hormone rooting powders. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. They uh, are really a mixture of a, a synthetic hormone and a fungicide, and there's no harm loving a fungicide at the bottom of your uh, plant. But of course, if you're organic, you, you can't do that. Um, I'm, I've never never used them because I've never found any need to. I find things root quite well as it is. So I'm just gonna work around this pot. I'm gonna put three around the side. Uh, people say they root better around the side. I don't see there's an awful lot of difference, but I'm going to uh, leave one for the middle, I'm afraid. So there's, there's your three around the side, all at a suitable depth. And in the middle, I shall put that long piece I had in the middle, so there we are. Goes down through there, firm that up, and there are our cuttings. Now, these will need a good watering. Once they've watered, I will put a plastic bag over them or put them in a, a still atmosphere so we don't lose too much moisture. And then, just keep an eye on Keep an eye on them. Obviously, they'll need to be kept frost free. If you can give them a little bit of warmth, they'll root much quicker. But generally, over the winter, they will root and then they'll be ready to pot on in the spring. And you can then grow them on for your plants for next year. Nice, easy way of getting uh, four plants from one. Also, are there any struggles you're having in the garden that we can help you with? Do let us know if there are any videos you would like to see. So if you are new here and you haven't subscribed and you've appreciated this video, do consider subscribing. And if you haven't downloaded your free guide yet, please jump on the link below. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye bye.